the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising. We're going to pray. Mark 14. A very instructive story. Mark chapter 14. We'll start our reading from verse 1, please. The Bible says, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And then all of this happened. The, the chief priests, they sought to put him to death. Verse 2. Mark chapter 14. Okay, next verse. I hope, that's, I, hope I got that right. Yes. Verse 3. Watch this. The Bible says, and being in Bethany. Please look up. In the house of Simon the leper, he sat to eat and a woman came. The Bible says that she had an alabaster box. Everybody please look up. An alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard. Then the Bible says it was very precious. And the Bible says she broke the box. Another synoptic account will tell you it was worth one year's wages. A salary of one year broke the box and poured it on his head and to the point that some had an indignation within themselves and they said why was this a waste that means every time you see this desire you will be tempted to think it's a waste of time a waste of life they called an expression of hunger and desire a waste What is this God thing that you are acting as if you didn't go to school? What is this God thing you are acting as if you are a failure? You already have results. Man of God, God has established you in ministry. What is this passion and rolling on the ground before God again? Remember the joy that was in the heart of David when the ark was being restored. He was dancing and dancing and Saul's daughter looked at him and said, shame on you. There are ethics to royalty. You are violating the ethics of royalty. He said, I am dancing before God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. God had her and she died barren. I have preached this message for as long as I can remember. Yet, surprisingly, people listen, but they never truly get it. That the real secret to power with God, to grace from on high, more than spiritual activities, is when a man gets to a point where you have the desire of David. There is a reason why God made the covenants that he made with David. The heart factor. Vetting your heart to find out, do you still have a desire to see him lifted? To see him glorified? To see him revealed? Do you have a desire for his presence? Most people want power. Most people want miracles. Most people want fame. Hello? Don't, don't feel insulted. Most people. I keep saying it again and again. Most people. Imagine with me, please. Um, one of these protocols. Please come. Come, sir. Let me use you. Look at this fine gentleman standing here. Imagine with me for a moment that this man comes to me. He's been calling me from morning till evening. Apostle, I want to see you. And I tell him I'm busy. And he says, please, I have to see you. It's a matter of life and death. And then as soon as he comes to me, he's not looking at me. All he wants is my shoe. All that call for my shoe. I want to snap your shoe so I look for the kind. I want to snap your watch and I'm standing in shock wondering you did not sleep all through the night calling me now that you have my attention what are you looking at I say look at me and he says no no it's not about your face I was just calling you because I was told that there is a material that you wear that is beautiful
Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. For by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you know that I'm here to stay. box she broke it I can waste it if it is before you and he looked at her heart and said everywhere the gospel is preached even though this woman was not ordained into ministry you cannot ignore her because she has communicated her love can I tell you something I know about God there are certain dimensions in God that only genuine lovers, those whose hearts have been purged sincerely to love him, not for things. I know we are humans. We need things to be. Some of you here are sick. Some of you came expecting increases of all sorts. But can I tell you sincerely, there are no gimmicks with God. If he cannot find himself in your heart, your heart must reflect his face back to him as a mirror. Otherwise, he does not trust what is there. Don't say I love the Lord. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than ministry? Do you love me more than titles? Do you love me more than power? More than signs and wonders? If I tell you to quit ministry now, will you still love me? If I tell you you may never drive a car in your life again, will you still love me? Or is the rolling just because you had a dream and you saw a car? There's nothing wrong with it. But you see, the prayer that God purifies your motif is a real prayer. A genuine prayer we have a generation of people who love God today and in a heartbeat when God gives them rest roundabout why should I come to church again I've gotten what I'm looking for why should I come to church again I'm now a politician I'm busy traveling around I'm now a leader I'm too busy I, I will follow online one day and God says I knew it See, God reminded David and said, let me let you know that I've not forgotten while you were a shepherd boy. Now you are king. I have seen the consistency of your desire. Every other thing changed except your desire. Listen, if you want God to bless you, change every other thing except that desire. Change cars, that's all right. Change buildings, that's all right. Change clothes, that's all right. Change approach to ministry, that's all right but never allow that desire to die. The same desire as a shepherd boy, the same desire as a king. I'd like to see your glory revealed. Can I tell you this? If I have any fear in my life at all, it's not losing ministry. If I have any fear in my life, it's not losing power. If I have any fear in my life, it's not losing my name or what you call reputation. If I have any fear in my life, it's not untimely death. If I have any fear in my life, it's to get to a point where that presence 
where my heart condition, my heart now exalts something above God. You can exalt prayer and fasting above God. You can exalt Bible study above God. The Bible talks about God, but God is a person. You can even exalt heaven above God. You can exalt breakthrough above God. My son, give me grace. You want to host God? This is the secret. Most of my encounters, I tell you, they did not come because of any effort per se on my own part. There is one thing I can tell you. I sincerely and truly love the Lord. And I desire for his name to be lifted and his glory to be revealed. If ever I pray for power, it's not to make a name. It's so that God can give me the privilege and the opportunity to be an extension of him to people. Everything starts and ends with him. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. Listen, if I can get you to a point this night, where you are willing to lay down all of the things that make you look like you love God. But in truth, there is an agenda that is locked up. Lord, I am tired of delay. There are yokes in our family. So they say, if I fast, I get your power. Oh yeah, let me fast. There's nothing wrong with that in itself. But if that is what leads you, he will tell you, okay, take, this is what you want. And most people will walk away from him. When David had found rest round about, he still had a desire. Lord, I cannot be sitting here and not build you a house. I know that you are God. You sit in heaven. The earth is your footstool. Yet, give me the privilege of bringing you close to find a place in my life. That in life and in death, you make up your mind that this thing is not just about church. This is not just about Christianity. I genuinely love you. And no matter what you give me, no matter where I go, my ultimate desire will be to see your glory revealed, to see your power revealed in me and then through me to my world. If that becomes your desire, you have passed the first test that can truly grant a man access to host God. Very superior dimensions of God. Otherwise, we will just wrap up a conference. You will receive miracles. You will receive many things. And recycle your frustration back to another one year. Seeking for something that only the size of God can feel. God put a realm called eternity in the hearts of man. And only his size can feel it. A car cannot feel it. Degrees cannot feel it. That is the reason why people become successful and still commit suicide and kill themselves. Nothing wrong with success. Ladies and gentlemen, you have not seen success till God has your heart. You will lay up gold as dust. You will not even know what to do with it. God will take the prayer request of many and give you as a gift. I made up my mind. It was a vow and a covenant with God. I said, Lord, if there is anything, whether ministry, power, if it has the ability to make me lose that presence, if it has the ability, I rather, I rather not be known in my lifetime. And yet my love and my passion for him, my desire to see him revealed, remains unchanged. Heaven 
for me is him being with me. Heaven is not when I fly through the skies. No, if he's not there, I don't want. If he changes his location to hell, then may I never go to heaven again. It is not about the location. It's about the person. It's not about the throne. It's him who sits on the throne. If the throne is empty, what should I do there? I have no business with the throne. You have to understand this. If he's not in the church, may I never have anything to do with church. If he's not in ministry, may I have any, not, never not have anything to do with ministry. If he's not in my prosperity, may I have nothing to do with it. He becomes the epicenter of my pursuit that I desire him more than life. And he says, this is for me. Let's go to the next level. Can I be sincere with you? I apologize if I sound harsh, but many of us, I can tell you the reason why you are unable. It's not because the devil is so powerful. It's because there is, there is a corruption in the sincerity of our heart. This hard thing. You can fast for 40 days and from day one, the heart is already corrupted. You will enjoy the mercy of God. But I tell you, if it is heaven you want to host. You've heard me say it in my teachings. Till today, when I go before God, sir, I don't go before him as Apostle Joshua Selman. Nonsense. Apostle Joshua Selman. It's men that call me Apostle. Oh. Lord, your boy is still here. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me. Here's the part of the song I love. I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. want to host God you must love him you must desire to see him glorified not self not ambition Jesus revealed Jesus glorified And with our hands lifted up, we, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why. We just tell them we love. Oh, we just tell them we love you. Can I tell you sincerely? Please listen to me. I know some of you are crying. It's a very simple message tonight. I have had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few extremely great people, believers, whether in business, in government, in ministry. And most times when I sit down with them, sincerely by God there is nothing in itself that
that is exceptional. You will look for the wow factor and not find it. All your eyes will see is the, the plethora of limitations. Yet the results remain undeniable. The key is that when God comes, please anyone come. When your heart becomes genuinely right with God and he comes to hold you and say, let's go. Your life becomes a wonder. Please listen to me. You will be seeing a mountain and come close and not see it again. Because there is a hand that picks that mountain. And men cannot see the hand. So they think it's your hand that lifted it. When God decides to come and stay with a man. Moses understood this. He said, do not let us depart from here. If your presence, we still have our weapons of war. Don't let us depart from here. We'll only embarrass ourselves. How will they know that we are different? He said, my presence will go with you. Not my presence will visit you. Moses knew it. My presence will go with you. And I, by that presence. David said, cast me not away from your presence. Cast me out of the throne, I agree. But cast me not away from your presence. It says, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Can I tell you this? Please look at me. If you lose money and you still have him, you did not lose. If you lose ministry and you still have him, sincerely, you did not lose. But no matter what else you have, if he's not there, you lost. Oh, you lost. It's only a matter of time you will know that his presence is what controls everything. I have come tonight to help you understand the spiritual protocol that governs hosting God. And one of it tonight is this heart condition that I call the desire of David. I desire you more than things. I desire you more than rest. I desire you more than money. Can I be sincere with you? This is the grace and one of the mysteries that has kept your precious pastor, the man of God, 20 years with all that has happened. I sat back there and while I was watching, I said, this is my message. When you see results that humans cannot produce, you know that God was involved in it. And I am telling you that you don't, you don't, it's not a parliament that calls him to come. You don't vote him to come. Your heart condition is the magnet that draws his presence to you. There are magnets that are weak. They may not be able to draw much, but there are magnets that are powerful. They can lift cars. You can use them and lift cars. Your heart is that magnet. When you love the Lord, you can sit down and an anointing will leave a conference somewhere and come and meet you in your room. While you are there saying, Lord, I may not have all it takes to serve your purposes, but if for any reason you can find a vessel in me, I am available. And that anointing will leave a conference and come and meet you in your room. Some of you are crying because God has been showing you this message in dreams. You have not been understanding it. God is saying, it's not that I cannot lift you. It's not that I cannot open a door for you. But your heart condition. Many times I restrict my blessings to preserve you. Because as it is, if you find rest in this condition, you may not even be a Christian again. Have you not seen people who were workers in church? And God just lifted them. They went abroad and they came back like demons. House on the Rock, Enugu. One more time, the Lord is speaking to you. Don't 
just lift your hands. Lift your heart. Lift your heart. That you can give him your heart and say, Lord, from today, you are my obsession. Blessing or no blessing. Lifting or no lifting. I will teach my children your ways. Even when I sit on the throne, I will never forget you. You have become my obsession. As simple and childlike as this is. And he comes to you in power. And will invest levels of his presence upon your life. That you will be surprised. You will watch doors open. Brothers and sisters, you will see God do things in your life. That you will marvel and wonder. People will look at you and they cannot add up where the result is coming from. But then it never stops happening because there is divine presence. You have captured levels and dimensions of God. Please don't miss tomorrow's sessions. When I found this secret, I said I will never let it go. My heart, my heart, my heart. More than my prayer, more than my preaching. My heart, my heart, my heart. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you more than ministry. I'm not serving and loving you and desiring to see your kingdom come just because I'm succeeding in ministry. Even if I were failing, my passion would not, be, would not change. Change everything in your life. But leave that desire. Leave it there. Leave it there. Don't replace it with things. Don't replace it with titles. Don't let age fade the desire away. we blessed behold I stand at the door of your heart and I knock if you are interested I stand at the door of your heart that's the part I'm interested I'm knocking what is he doing at the door of your heart if you choose you can open the door and let me find space but if you think your heart is full and you are too busy I am patient, I can let you be. But you can open that door and I can come in and you shut that door and I will eat with you. The, he was talking to John. John the Revelator was archiving what he was telling the seven churches. Behold! He was not talking to seven unbelievers. He was talking to seven churches. I am still looking for your heart. It's not new birth. This is not giving your life to Jesus. He's talking about a deeper and a richer experience. Apostle, but I've been born again. That's not what I'm talking about. He's still standing at the door. We're going to spend 10 minutes praying. Please don't be distracted. And the prayer is a prayer of surrender. Lord, impart upon me the desire of David. The desire of David. The desire of David. The desire of David according to Psalm 27 please give us Psalm 27 and verse 4 as we pray all the overflows outside following online we are about to pray one thing have I desired you have desired many things but leave all those desires one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and to behold you all the days of your life. Are you ready to pray? Please lift your voice. Cry to the Lord. This is you and Jesus for the next five, ten minutes. You and Jesus, your maker, the one whose presence you want to see manifest in your life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. House on the rock, Enugu. Enugu state. Pray for 
for the desire of David. One thing have I desired. Are you praying? Please pray. Don't be tired. Take it serious. Oh, I desire you. I desire you. I desire you. The fullness of your presence and your glory in my life. Someone is praying. Nothing can take your place in my life. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Dethrone every idol. Idols of achievement. Idols of vain desires. Hallelujah. Please look at me. There are people today who threaten pastors and men of God and tell them if God does not answer my prayer, I will stop being a worker in this church. If God does not answer my prayer, I've given God, I've been a worker for one year. Can I tell you the truth? Do not make the mistake of the workers in the parable that Jesus gave. The Bible talks about a parable of the owner of a vine and the workers. I just felt in my spirit to say this. There are many people whose Christianity is conditional. While it is true that there is a covenant of service, that when you serve the Lord, he will bless. But can I tell you this? You must love him more than that. I've been sweeping the house of God and nothing is changing. I'm going. And God says, that was it? Was that the motivation? Hallelujah. When your passion, your love, your drive, nothing can take that place. When you are alone with God, you remind yourself again. Is the object of my obsession. Lord, you have helped me. You have shown me mercy. But regardless what happens to me, good or bad, one thing for sure is I may change every other thing, but not you. Not my love, not my passion. I will die loving you, die serving you, die living for you. All these things, we are more than conquerors on account of that love and that passion that desire please purify your desire purify your motives why do you seek him they sought him because they were hungry as soon as he fed them with five thousand with with five loaves and two fish all of them threw the excesses and went away and they said go and gather the crumbs 12 baskets they wasted it we've used you and we've dumped you we're on our way going and he looked at the disciples. He said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? We didn't just come. For, we, who, whom shall we go? You alone have the word of life. And he turned them eventually to apostles of the Lamb. And some, even when they ran away, they came back repenting with brokenness. Peter said, depart from me. I am a sinner. Simon Barjona, he said, John 21. Lovest thou more than me more than this? He said, yes feed my lamb then feed my sheep then feed my sheep if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you can I tell you sincerely I stand before the God of heaven there is nothing in my life today that I cannot surrender to prove my love for Jesus my passion for him 
I love him more than that. And my assignment tonight is to impart upon you that desire of David. I don't know how God did it in my life, oh, but it's my prayer that what he did to me, let it happen for someone in this place this night. In the name of Jesus, that no amount of money, no amount of lifting will ever make God look like a nuisance in your life. That you will not just carry him like an extra luggage. That divine presence, you will love the presence of Jesus more than power, more than ministry. If that happens to you, then you will also get the blessing of David. Don't claim the blessing of David. The blessing of David is dominion. To find someone to establish his kingdom. Today when you look at Israel, the symbol of their flag is the star of David. Not the star of Abraham. No, the star of David. The star of David. Listen to me. It was on the strength of this that I started having encounters. It was not just fasting and prayer. Many of the encounters I've had today that have changed my life, it was God coming to me. And it has not ended coming to me. My son, let me open this to you. You can open this Bible and search and there are things you will never see until God comes to you. He brings them. There are things that are not studied. You are, he comes and brings you into that body of truth. You know, it's easy for men of God to want to take pride in things like this, to make it look as though it's our doing. It's not true. There are some things that only God, God comes to pick you. Signs and wonders. This grace for signs and wonders that you see. Brothers and sisters, it did not, I don't think I would have had the strength and the stamina to go through it and get it that way. With the sincerity of my heart, loving Jesus. And here he comes again. He promised that if you love him and you mean business with him, you will find him. You can find God and you can host him. And a generation can know that you carry him. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. That every lukewarmness, please just help those under the anointing. And everything that has stolen his love, stolen your passion. Some of you, when you started with God, you were not like this. But right now, you have thrown everything that is God in your life. Just the routine of church. Sunday, in and out. But your heart is no longer with him. He's speaking to you seriously. There is need for that restoration. Because in this end time, there are mighty things and marvelous things that God is doing. In men and through men to the nations. But he needs people who love him sincerely. Please look at me. I just sense in my heart to use this opportunity and make an altar call. Can I do that? I'm going to make a very serious altar call right now before I pray. Within this auditorium and all the overflows, there are people whilst you were hearing me speak, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you and say it is time to make things right with Jesus. Now, I, I can't force you.
can sit down and share the grace and go back but this conference was so put by your man of God because the Lord is giving someone an opportunity to restore that love and that fire for some of you you've been around the things of church but you have never truly taken God seriously I'm going to count one to five wherever you are those outside you may not maybe you may just move to your screens outside for the sake of space but those within here if you belong to that category as I count one to five honorably I'd like you to run and come and stand here one run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus Lord I'm tired of this give me a new beginning and for all of us who are standing please don't look at them just be praying talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart two are you coming to Jesus give me a new beginning give me a new beginning genuine relationship three someone is running to Jesus don't be distracted the few minutes that we have don't waste it these are moments of destiny if there's no space just stand at the aisles while we pray come to him come to him four one more count and we're done if you're still sitting please rush and join them here at this conference after 20 years God is opening a door for you hallelujah now in Jesus name please listen to me some of you here are giving your heart to Jesus genuinely and sincerely for the first time some of you, I presume you're rededicating your, your life. Please, let it be sincere from your heart. No playing games. Let it be sincere from your heart. Young and old, I honor and I salute you. I truly appreciate you for the courage to come out. Those in the overflows, thank you. Following online from whatever nation, we're about to make the altar call. I'd like you to be part of it right now. You're following in your home, your office, your device. Please participate right now. I want to plead with all of you who are in front. Can you lift your right hand as high, high above your head to the heavens? Jesus is here. I'm about to lead you to pray a prayer. And I want you to pray it sincerely. A miracle happens when we pray. A miracle happens when we pray. More so when we pray in faith. Please say after me loud and clear, inside, outside. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I need your life, your presence, your glory. I repent of my sin. I declare that I do not have the power to save or help myself but I believe in Jesus I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin that you rose again for my justification right now I ask you to come into my heart be my savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever I am a child of God please keep your hands lifted father thank you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning 
please help two of them. The power of God is coming on two of them right now. There are two people just here. I don't know. I just saw that in my vision. Among those who are out here, two of them, I just saw the power of God coming on them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare this experience will launch you into a new season. Not, not, not just that woman. There are two independent people aside from her. The power of God is coming on them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you that the Lord himself will use you mightily. You will experience his grace supernaturally. And I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Let this be the beginning of a new season in your life. A season of fire, a season of passion in the name of Jesus. That you will love him above and beyond anything that is in this life. Nothing should take his place in your life. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, um, I'm going to ask you, I presume, okay, what will happen is you return back to your seat rejoicing. If for any reason there is a call for those who have given their hearts to Jesus Christ, please do well to make yourself available. But before then, I'm seeing um, some counselors passing a slip. Do well to collect it before you go. Please be patient. Make sure you have the slip. Can you lift it up? Let them see what it looks like. So uh -huh. you can pick one. Just pass it. Make sure that you pick it. Go back to your seat. You can just fill it legibly and hand it over to any of the officers after the service. The Lord bless you and honor you. Please let's rise as I speak over your life. We have about five minutes and we're done for this morning. The message tonight, do not forget is that God desires to tabernacle with men. He's proven that man has always and remains his obsession. From Genesis to Revelation, God's object, God's motivation is love. The object of that motivation is man. Above and beyond anything else, he desires man. He loves man. He's unashamed to declare his vulnerability towards man. But for him to tabernacle with man, there are conditions that must be met. Chiefest among them, as we've discussed tonight, is the heart condition. More than other spiritual principles that I'll be teaching you. The heart of man. And God granted us grace to look at the simple message through the life of David. That a man can have that desire. Psalm 27. One thing have I desired. Let that be your desire. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The grace to hunger, the grace to love Jesus, the grace to passionately desire him and to seek him all the days of your life. I declare that that grace comes upon you now. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. And then I pray for you. Everything that fights that desire in your life whether it's an addiction whether it's a habit whatever it is in the name of Jesus here at this conference we declare it broken forever any wrong association that fights that place of Jesus in your life every wrong pursuit that attempts to fight that place in your life in the name of Jesus, you are set free from such associations. And I pray for you. May the Lord reintroduce himself to you. In visions, in dreams, through scripture, may you have fresh encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. From now and all through this conference, I declare fresh encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, just, just a counsel in one or two minutes and then I'll be back to my seat. Let me give you an advice. All through the time of this conference, may I request advice and strongly suggest that you remain very spiritual. Minimize distractions. That means from here when you resort back to your homes, don't get distracted. You can go online. I believe the messages are available. Listen to it again. And then do some study, pray in the spirit. See, the, the, the key to intimacy is time. You must invest your time. Don't go back and just laugh around and be ready to come back tomorrow and you completely forget all that was done 
and you forget that you cried, you forget that you were broken by the teaching, go back and take God seriously. Wake up in the night if you can. You should, as a matter of fact, you can wake up, even if it's just 30 minutes. Lord, I desire you, play worship. Just let your atmosphere be saturated by worship and you just pray and express your desire. I love you, plant in me that desire of David. Read that psalm again and take God seriously and watch what begins to happen to you. Especially if you are a minister of the gospel or you are one who has seen that the call of God is upon your life. It will not be without this sacrifice. It shouldn't be surprising to you because it is a sacrifice. I pray for you, the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Many of you before tomorrow morning, you will return with testimonies of this presence. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Can we just appreciate God once again for God's servant tonight? I like you wherever you are. Please don't forget we have... waiting for you out there for those of you whose cars are not here will you stretch your hands towards God's servant as we just whisper a word of prayer we want to invite our daddy that you'll be on the bongo, to just come and pray for our for God's servant tonight please let's receive our, our daddy to pray for him please can you just give us another three minutes or so so we can close officially and go please our daddy wants to just pray for God's servant we're going to pray together for him he loves us deeply and we love him too. There should be an exchange now. He's given out. We've received. Now it's our turn to pray that God will continue to lift him higher and higher. Lift up your voices and begin to pray. If you ever received anything, this is the time to sow back into his life. May the Lord hear your voices as you pray. Lift up your voices and pray. Thank God for his life. Thank God for his obedience. Thank God for his sacrifice. Thank God for his sharing his experiences with him. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, the way you treat us and the way you handle us is so awesome. The simplicity of your word has broken us down. Lord, we cry tonight. We shed tears of joy and regret tonight. We thank you for this vessel that you have revealed to us. Lord, Enugu is going through a special time. Even at this time, 17 governors or so are in the city. And you brought our own, your own, to minister to us. Therefore, we pray, oh God, that you replenish his energy and get him back to refresh for tomorrow morning and evening. We thank you. We bless your name for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's say a louder amen, please. Amen. Please, while you remain standing, if you don't mind, very quickly, don't forget tomorrow, there's a morning session for 9 a.m. for every leader and everyone that wants to increase your leadership in whatever sphere God has called you to. Number two, please, tomorrow's evening when you are coming in, every single one of us, there's a prophet in our city. I want you to take a special seed in the evening, not in the morning. 
when you are coming, we want to bless God's servant. We want to bless him. We want to say thank you for putting your legs in our city and coming to be a blessing to our land. When you're coming in the evening, take a special seat for God's servant when you're coming in the evening. Finally, I want to say that, listen to this. Tonight in this house, when I was in the Nigerian law school, Lagos, I lost my father. Exam was coming. I couldn't pay for bar exams. I couldn't pay my school fees to write the bar exam. One woman and her sister paid my school fee. Today, she's in this house. I want to honor the presence of my darling sister, Aunt Lizzie Mbachu. Please help me put your hands together for her. She's over there with her two sons. They are in the house tonight. God bless you. God bless you. And please, when I was making the introductions, I forgot that one of the greatest servants of God in the house on the Rock family is in the house. I didn't see him. Please receive and, and celebrate for me Pastor Annie Ikebudu, House on the Rock, Abba. And then also Pastor Godlives Amedu, all the way from House on the Rock, Oka. And I'm going to be asking Pastor Annie, please, and, then, and then I also have in the house, when I got born again in deeper life, my first pastor who pastored me in deeper life, all the way from Wari, is in the house tonight. Pastor Ifirovo, please put your hands together for him. He's somewhere at the back. When I got born again in deeper life, he was the first pastor who pastored me. Ladies and gentlemen, for the closing of the service, will you kindly receive Pastor Annie Ikebodo for to share the benediction with us. Pastor Annie, please will you come. Once again, don't forget we have free transportation out there for every one of you who car to put on the way from America. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.